everybody. This week on Horror Movie Night, we cook off, we get grandpa out, and we let the hammer at home. Scott's not a fan of what's on this menu. Adam's up to his elbows in hog, hog bitches. And myself, <laughs> myself, much like Bubba, can't finish it off. If you're the saboteur... <laughs> If you're the saboteur who's been fucking up our house, then you better move, because we're bringing the sheep on this week's Horror Movie Night episode as we discuss the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. Matt, you fucked that up so oh, bad. Yeah, There's no. so many levels. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, that's something funny, though. Yeah, no, that's a... So, so listeners at home, I fucked that up. <laughs> so, moving on. Uh, so, right off the bat, this movie's narration tells us that since 1974, Sally has become catatonic, and the Sawyer family has never been found. And it's about 13 years later, and we're introduced to Stretch, a female DJ, and two of the most obnoxious college students or high school students. <laughs> they're, not, they're high school kids. I, I did not catch that the first time I watched this. Hey, before you get into this, I picked this movie. Yes, you did. Yes, you Adam did. did not realize that I picked this movie, but I had been talking about how we'd eventually get to this for like six months. <laughs> Actually, I think that I talked about this before we were even horror movie night. When I came out last summer, last spring, when we did our um, our our Panel panels, one. yeah, um, I'm pretty sure that I said we'll eventually discuss this movie, and it only took like 14 months to yeah. get to it. Yeah, I picked this because I really wanted to give it a second chance. <laughs> yeah, because you hate it. Like, I think Adam I was, and I both I, told you I was it was upset. crazy. And you were like, this movie's not that good, guys. You, you, no, over, I was, I was this. expecting it to. You guys, you guys just really hyped it up for me. And then I was so disappointed. We did to you what you and I did to Adam with Dr. Giggles, where we were just <laughs> Hell so, no. No, so no. all about Let's Dr. Giggles. Dr. Giggles again. Let's just listen to Dr. Giggles again because that podcast, it was awesome and that movie is awesome. And so is this Pounding movie. continues. <laughs> intensifies. Um, so, so these two high school students call the radio show and start to harass Stretch. They don't really establish why she can't hang up, but she's like, ah, oh, they got to hang up. Like, that's like oh, what... I- that's, I think that that's the way that things were back in the day. Like I, I, that's actually why I said uh, I made myself a note about that. I, I said, funny to think that you used to be able to hang up a phone, uh, hold up a phone line by not hanging up. It feels like it's just a different lifetime. I, but I guess I remember that where it was like a party line thing. I guess like if you hung up the phone, it didn't sever the connection until they hung up the phone too. I guess I think that that was like pre digital. I don't know. I don't know. I've I've started a fun game where when I'm talking to someone on my cell phone, uh, and especially if I have them on speaker, I'll say goodbye and I purposely won't hang up because most people just expect you to hang up, so they'll just keep their phone on for like five, ten minutes, and then eventually I'll hang up the phone. I don't hey, know. I'm never calling you again. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a pretty creepy fucking thing to do. You fucking weirdos. <laughs> Creepy shit that Matt can do. That definitely tops the list for me. Uh, so the one, the <laughs> one it dude. Off like you don't agree. <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, so the one dude in this car is literally just the combination of the most obnoxious things possible. He's got an annoying <laughs> laugh. He's got these stupid fucking sunglasses that have like <laughs> fake eyes behind them, and then he's yeah. just shooting signs with a gun. Like he is the worst character. And I'm glad I'm that he's the person, and I wasn't going to complain about that. <laughs> this leads to their death actually being recorded, and and despite how annoying they, these characters are, I love this opening kill so much with this like weird corpse puppet that's like strapped. Oh, that, oh yeah, yeah, like strapped on the leather face, and then there's like that big blood spurt when they cut off the side of his head and it like slides off and it's like spurting all up in the air and, and then, shit. Then you see from behind and his hands are just going blah, 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 like on both sides of his face. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, oh, so I did say, I'm so glad that these guys got eviscerated because they're insufferable. And I actually, the first time I watched this, all I remember from watching it was how annoying Stretch was and how later on when she just is repeating the same line over and over again, like, no, no, no. Um, (laughs) But in the beginning, she's actually kind of badass. Yeah. Until she basically goes insane. Because that's what I realized is that this movie is pretty great because she's annoying as hell in the end because she's totally unhinged. We'll get there. But 
At the beginning, she is pretty funny um, and, and, and pretty badass. I love that half decapitation. You know yeah. how we always have a running tally of decapitations in movies? I don't think there really is a full decapitation, just half one. <laughs> yeah. This introduces Dennis Hopper, who is named Lefty. Everyone in this name has, like, as I was writing this down, and I'm writing shit like, Lefty and Stretch fight Chop Top. Like, I'm like, Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ, this movie with these names. Like, <laughs> Toby Hooper was like, hey, what's, who's got a last name that sounds like my, my last name? Dennis Hopper? All right, how many rails do I have to give him for him to come and work this movie with me? <laughs> but yeah, so he's searching for, for the Sawyer family. Because he's the, so is he the un, he's the uncle of Sally and Franklin, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because when he finds Franklin, he keeps calling him his brother. When he yeah, which is also weird that like thirteen years later they just still have this skeleton sitting in a wheelchair just hanging. out. But they out. keep all these skeletons around, like this crazy grotesquerie that that they have in every room, every hallway, like. How many people have they killed yeah. in 13 years? How many people have gone missing and the Sawyer family has not been caught? And also, how the fuck is um, the Chili King? Oh, uh, his... uh, Drayton? Drayton. How is it that he is basically half famous for, for, for all, his, all of his meat? And no one has figured this out, yeah. that he's part of the Sawyer family. And... How is it that so they just kill people willy nilly? Like they don't even, you know. At least in like, what's that Australian one? Wrong turn? No, not wrong turn. Uh, um, Wolf uh, Creek. Wolf Creek. In Wolf Creek, the guy like kills travelers and and people that are backpacking. The Sawyer family kills everybody. Yeah, they just any. Fuck. Yeah, they don't care. So so Stretch catches up with Lefty, <laughs> so she can wait, 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 wait. You are missing a very important part of that first scene. Oingo Boingo's playing. Oh, yep, very true. <laughs> well, I mean, which is way better than the last time we discussed the movie where Ungo Boingo was <laughs> uh, so, so Lefty gives, or Stretch gives Lefty the tape of the guys getting killed. And then we go to this chili cook-off, which I don't understand what the point of a radio DJ broadcasting from a chili cook-off is. But she talks about the fact that nobody cares about her show. That's like true. her show is just filler. So I feel like it's it's kind of like analogous to a reporter who doesn't get good stories and so they have to go do human interest pieces and that's why she was there. Makes sense. Her her co producer or whatever uh is making a really fucking awesome French fry house. Yeah, eat your little fry house. <laughs> <laughs> note because i thought that was such a great line <laughs> i have a note here where drayton says that he won the chili sauce uh, the chili contest because the meat it, it's it's because of the meat he says the and meat. i and i said and sometimes the sauce makes the dish <laughs> <laughs> um also you know why i picked this movie right any movie with un with like people that are unintentionally cannibals because of their their either you know like some cannibals are like oh, oh I'm gonna feed this feed these people you know like I'm I'm talking Blood Diner although that movie sucked Motel Hell this movie Poultry, <laughs> I'm actually, poultry Geist when you pick that guys, yeah I got I, I you love accidental cannibalism you don't I like love, real cannibalism but, but no just accidental because <laughs> those people deserve it anyway that's yeah a uh, strange fetish to have that's as weird <laughs> as Matt's phone thing that he does. <laughs> So Adam's gonna give his weird fetish in a minute here. This is our tell all episode. <laughs> Put that in bold letters, everybody will listen to it. This is where you see that Sawyer is just delightfully insane because he's just the guy who plays him, I don't know what else he was in. That's it. This is it. He's done two <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies and nothing else. He's the oh, only man. person that came back from the first movie. He is fantastic. Just off the rails crazy. Like he is crazy without the cocaine. Like Dennis Hopper is obviously hopped up on the, in this movie, but like, <laughs> like how, how? I didn't know if that was a pun or not, but I like it. Oh shit! I he was Dennis that. hopped up. <laughs> Dennis hopped up, dude. He did so much. I think they might have paid him in cocaine in the, for this movie because <laughs> he is just he is almost blue velvet crazy in this movie like i just want him to turn to the camera and be like daddy wants to fuck this is where dennis <laughs> hopper goes chainsaw shopping and finds the longest chainsaw i've ever seen in my fucking life uh you obviously haven't watched chainsaw 3 leatherface uh oh, yes yeah. you're, you're right that is longer 
That uh, scene is just chainsaw porn. <laughs> and then, like last week, show me another movie with chainsaw porn. You cannot. <laughs> There's a line in that scene, and I, I may have misheard it. I did not put the closed captions on when I was watching this. But I believe the, the chainsaw shopkeeper says, oh, my good banana. When Dennis Hopper is <laughs> like, just go into uh, town on a piece of wood. <laughs> like, Oh, oh, by the way, that is not how you use a chainsaw. No yeah, chainsaw man. salesman would ever let you fucking do that. <laughs> That's like, if you're going to smash a chainsaw on a log, it's either going to kick back and chop you in the fucking neck and you're going to bleed out in front of the cut right, or the chain is going to bust apart and fly at your face and it's going to decapitate you. Like, I can't even imagine that, like, I've used chainsaws enough. I grew up, you know, like, I'm, I'm, like, I grew up in the country, so I've used chainsaws a ton of times in my life, and they're terrifying. I don't know, he, like, that's what I'm saying. Dennis Hopper must have been so high to, 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 like, smash chainsaws on wooden structures, because that is just asking for it. It was, it was so weird when he left the store and he had, like, three, four of them in his arms, and I was like, well, you only really need the one. And I was like, oh, that's why. Because he's going to go through them like fucking nothing. If that's the way that he's going to use them. <laughs> yeah, he barely used the two baby hand ones uh, when he does have his uh, uh, final fight with Leatherface. Yeah, I know, but he bought some pretty kick-ass holsters for them. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so, uh, so Lefty asks Stretch to broadcast the tape of the attack so that officials will start to take this Sawyer family issue seriously. And Drayton... After they've killed hundreds of people for the last decade and a half, people are <laughs> going to be like, oh, oh, I'm going to take this possibly fake radio show seriously when, when all these missing persons aren't going to be taken seriously. Okay. So, Texas isn't that big! So, so Drayton hears the tape and tells the family uh side note he calls them fudge packers i i'm i'm <laughs> yes. eight so that made me laugh uh but he, he basically also calls people coon shits <laughs> which i don't get that but yeah they they attack the station this is when bill mosley enters the film oh god the worst part of the movie uh, he is the worst part of the movie so so here's here's a few things that i have about this scene because i've got a lot of notes for this scene so bill mosley Chop Top uh, arrives at the station and he's dressed like a hippie and he's talking like Beetlejuice. <laughs> so, oh my god, he is. So here's my problem. So I I had the I had the Wikipedia page open uh, while I was watching this on my phone just to like double check to make sure I wasn't missing anything. Now I had always assumed that Bill Mosley was playing the hitchhiker from the first movie and that's why he had the metal plate was that he got ran over by the eighteen wheeler, but. According to the Wikipedia page, the corpse that they strap on themselves is the hitchhiker, and this is his identical twin brother who was in Vietnam while the first movie occurred. <laughs> but I don't remember any of that information being given to me at all during this movie. Is Bill Mosley in the first Texas Chainsaw no, Massacre? No. Okay, he just looks the guy. They got someone that looks like the guy from the first one. Yeah. And that's what okay. I'm saying. It's like he's supposed to be the twin brother of the one from the first one. Not, but not obviously fraternal twin, not identical, because it's not Bill Mosley in the first one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, uh, just I, I know that might be a little pedantic. But then, uh, then, then Stretch gives him the shittiest tour of a radio station I've ever seen. <laughs> in- I like it when she's like, "Are you fucking crazy? We are closed." <laughs> So I have to admit that when Leatherface ran out of the record vault, I legitimately jumped. <laughs> like, the time or the tenth time? No, like I knew that it was going to happen, but I guess the sound of the lo- the chainsaw just immediately kicking on made me like jump. Uh, and then this is where we get to the only thing that I ever remember about this movie, which is that Primus used the clip of Bill Mosley saying "Dog will hunt" in the song "Jerry Was a Race Car Driver." <laughs> I, I really like the the symmetry with Leatherface. Um, and stretch because and this was definitely intentional so th- that's the that's the most confusing part about this movie really is that toby hooper has a couple little moments of genius but the rest is just ridiculous but one of the moments of genius has to be where she where he's running after stretch she shoots the fire extinguisher in his face and then slams that metal door that sliding metal door because if you remember in the first one, the first time you see Leatherface, because 
you I mean I would have loved to have been in a movie theater in 1974 when TCM came out and that reveal of Leatherface with the chainsaw. Oh, comes, it is one like, of the best reveals of any person you, in you our can, history. You can't top that. You absolutely can't top that. Like as far as 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 far as like iconic horror creatures, I feel like that is one of the it, if not the best, one of the best reveals. But anyway, so he grabs the one girl, Sally, I think, may, or not Sally, the other girl with the red pants and he red shorts and he care he like drags her up that ramp and then slams that door and you're just like oh shit she's she's dead um this is like that except the opposite where the survivor girl slams the door on leatherface and you're like oh she's safe but i mean not really because the movie's only 30 minutes in <laughs> but uh i thought that was really cool i mean i don't know it, there are a couple there are like i said there are a couple moments that this movie is just genius but um the rest is absolute coke fueled insanity the 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 incessant references to stretch as a bitch begin in this scene that's basically bill mosley's 50 percent of his his screen time is calling her a bitch um a hog bitch or a Go cut that bitch or get that bitch or whatever. Like, I fucking hate Bill Mosley. I, I hate him because he picks these super misogynistic characters. Like, I fucking hated House of a Thousand Corpses. I really hated The Devil's Rejects. Like, I don't understand people that love those movies and love him so, because so speaking, he's just awful. So speaking of Bill Mosley and The House of a Thousand Corpses, when House of a Thousand Corpses came out, everyone was like, oh, it's a Texas Chainsaw Massacre ripoff. It's a Texas Chainsaw Massacre ri- ripoff. Watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 this time... House of a Thousand Corpses is actually definitely a Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 ripoff. 2 ripoff, than, yeah. That's, like, that's what I was thinking the first time I watched TCM 2. Was like, god damn, I did not realize that Rob Zombie was going to just completely plagiarize this film. Yeah, like it's, and I actually like House of a Thousand Corpses, but that's, I know I'm in the minority on that. Uh, so this is around the point where Stretch's co-worker LG shows up. Again, his name's LG because no one can just have a regular name like Adam or Matt or Scott. It's Texas! <laughs> um... He shows up and he's beaten with a hammer by Chop Top, but somehow doesn't die. Uh, Stretch charms Leatherface into sparing her life, and then not until Leatherface so... uses yeah, the that, chainsaw that as a dick. <laughs> yeah, the the horny Leatherface is the worst thing. It's so disturbing to me. I get it. The chainsaw is a penis, and it's a destructive force. I get it. Look, the saw is fat. Smart enough to get that, but it's awful. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah, you know what? The gun, the gun is good. The penis, eh, it's evil. <laughs> Chainsaw, though. <laughs> so Bill Mosley uses the same incoming male joke twice while hitting LG with a hammer, and I, I feel like that was a, a riff on, like he just riffed that line while they were recording, and he was like, oh, I don't, I don't think. I didn't get the laugh. I don't think they got it the first time. Yeah. Let me do it again. Yeah, yeah. Let, me do the, let me use this again. I don't think I got the laugh that I was going for on incoming <laughs> mail. It's fucking like gold, that. Toby. It's gold. <laughs> no, I'm sure Toby was like, it's gold, Bill. Do it again. <laughs> so, Let's not give Toby Hooper a get out of jail free card for <laughs> anything. That's true. Yeah, it was essentially like... <sighs> Yeah, that was good. That was fucking good. Yeah, you gotta try it again. You gotta try it one more time? Okay. We'll Dennis, one come here! Dennis. Uh, so Lefty God. shows we, up and scares... Can we talk about what, what, like, the downward trajectory, trajectory of Toby Hooper's career? Like, what the fuck <laughs> is what... what is this? Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I honestly can't tell you. Okay, I can tell you his whole career. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he did Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is, like, I would argue the best horror movie that's ever existed. Um, We've had this argument. We're not even going to go there. But yeah, so that is followed by Eaten Alive, which is about a uh, hotel owner who has a killer alligator that lives underneath his hotel that he feeds hotel guests to. It sounds abysmal. It's slow, boring, and has like maybe 10 good minutes, but I own it because I own everything. (laughs) Then then I'm pretty sure he did Funhouse, which is my favorite of his post Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Wait, Funhouse like the Dean Koontz movie book? Yes. Movie? Yes. Holy shit. Wow. Yeah, so he did Funhouse. Then it was when that whole Canon Films thing happened where he Wait, did what's like the whole Canon Films thing? He did three movies for them. Uh Invaders from Mars, Life Force, and this. Oh my god, he did Life Force. I forgot. <laughs> oh. And then I'm pretty sure his career has not been the same since Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 because it just much like the other two films that he did for Canon Films, made like next to nothing. <laughs> like, did you do um, TCM three? No, no. He, he didn't want to do TCM two. <laughs> like, 
you'd never know that by the amount of work you put into it. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, he, he apparently, I forget where, I think it's on that documentary that, that Adam and I keep sucking the dick of, of, uh, electric, <laughs> uh, of electric boogaloo. But, um, oh, you know what? I missed one after Funhouse He did uh poltergeist and that's why he got to deal with Canon. He did, he did poltergeist. Yeah. What? Yes. He directed thing, right? poltergeist? Yeah. He directed poltergeist. The first one. The first one. I think one. with. With a very heavy hand from Steven Spielberg, Spielberg yeah. involved there as he, well. He also did the Holy TV. Holy shit! You're blowing my mind. He also did the Salem's Lot miniseries from the seventies. Yeah, but that's not that great. I only watched it one time in high school, and it wasn't worth a, a re rewatch. But, but yeah, it's, beyond it's, that, he's done next to nothing. He did a movie called uh, an anthology film called Body Bags. He did the Mangler. We did. Didn't we discuss Body Bags? No, because I've never seen. No, Body Bags. I I thought about it for a while. I thought about picking it. But never did we, got did around we talk? to it. I watched it. I, re- I watched it. I remember t- telling you guys that I watched it. This is Munchies 2 all over again. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's uh, that's that's his little career. He also did Toolbox Murders and, and The Mangler. Oh, and the then, remake of Toolbox Murders. That's right. Yeah. yeah I didn't watch that. I yeah, watched the original. Pretty, pretty much after Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, he just kind of did TV episodes and like random garbage. And he's never it's really just so recovered. strange, though, to, like, you can see that he had a really great vision for Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and then people kept giving him money, hoping that he would recreate it, and he just had fucking nothing else left in the tank, man. Like, he just had shit. <laughs> kind of yeah. true. I, you know, I gotta agree with Adam that it's like he, he just hit it and quit it, and there was nothing that he could do to, like, get back to where he was there. Well, I, I mean, I think that there's an element of it where they, they say, like, in music, like, you have your whole career to write the first album. You know what I mean? Like, who knows how long he was thinking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like, he maybe spent, like, five or six years, and then he made it, and he's like, wait, I gotta make more of these now? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, uh, I, I, is that the same thing that happened to Kevin Smith about uh, seven or eight years ago? Yeah. No, well, that man has announced his retirement on four different occasions in the last ten years. So. I just do it. Just do it and save us that asshole. Yeah, it. stop teasing us, fucking yoga <laughs> yeah, hosers. <laughs> Jesus. Can we talk for just one second about the Bratzies in Yoga Hosers? I still haven't I, watched that trailer. I don't. It's like he thinks of a pun and then builds the whole movie around it. It's so it's fucking awful. stupid. It's like an episode of Horror Movie Night. But there's a much higher like budget for that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, so we we're about we we're, don't spend any money. We're about to get into the third act of this movie, which goes on forever. But uh, so Lefty arrives, scares Stretch into falling into a hole that leads into the Sawyer's like torture pit because apparently they're like right behind the radio station. I guess like they're not that not far. That she gets there on foot. Wait, you're missing the fact that he was like, "I did it. I used you. Now take the skeleton hand and don't get too dooted, little sister." <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so. Here's here's Matt's quick story time about watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. My friend had texted me and she was like, hey, you should come over and watch a movie like me, you, and, and Mark. And I'm like, all right, cool. So I head over there to her and her husband's house. And we're I'm like, look, I got to watch these movies today for a podcast tomorrow. And I brought over Frank and Hooker and Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 and let them choose which one they wanted to watch. So they went with Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. So they have a five-year-old. And their five-year-old was in the backyard playing and shit. This was around the time that the five-year-old walked into the house and just, like, sat down and started playing with her toys but kept watching the TV. (laughs) This five-year-old had no reaction to anything that was happening during this movie. But every once in a while, she would say something, and I have one of her quotes written down here. So the scene is that Leatherface cuts off LG's face and puts it on stretch, and then they start to dance. The five-year-old goes... Oh, he's making her look like a zombie so she doesn't get in trouble. Hey, they're friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that kid's going to be fucked up. Yeah. But, um yeah. But LG Way to go, Matt, ruining kids that aren't even your own. <laughs> yep. Jesus Christ. Uh so so LG is somehow still alive and manages to free stretch and then dies and it's like the closest we've come to like someone making a Noise as they die. <laughs> like, it's, 
I think the grandma might have done that at the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, also, how was she alive? She was not alive, right? Like, Bill mostly just thought that, that she was still alive. Am I, no, am no, I no. wrong? She was moving around. Yeah. She was still alive. Um, this <sighs> So this whole scene in the underground pit is like half of the fucking movie. Like this yeah, this whole 45 minute long yeah, scene. Yeah, this movie is an hour also 90% of their budget. Yeah, this movie's an hour and 40 minutes long and it is an it hour in the catacombs. <laughs> yeah, it could easily have been so much shorter if they just trimmed this down. But yeah, Lefty finds uh Franklin's skeleton working flashlight included and begins to wait, chop wait, wait, down wait. the missing, torture pit. You're missing you're missing the best thing that he finds. It's just it's so fucking ridiculous. He goes down and he sees the blood seeping from oh, yeah. the wall. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he fucking <laughs> kicks it. <laughs> and then, uh, so the blood and guts come power, just power flowing out of this wall. Like, 100 gallons of blood and guts. Like, why wouldn't they use the blood and guts in their sausage? Sell them to the idiots that love meat in Texas. Instead of letting it sit behind a wall and just fester and, and wait for Lefty to find it. That's just wasteful. Um, and then – but then again, just then again, they're stupid fucking inbred hicks and I should not expect them to cover their tracks. But that doesn't absolve – like the police force in Texas of not being like, god damn it smells awful out here. Let's just go and find out what's going on. All right. But, so, so yeah, he finds the entrails hidden in the wall. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but then he's like, but he's got like all these chainsaws, and he's like, gonna go into the monster's lair, you know? And he's just like, oh, guess I better make a big fuss. He's yeah. so loud, and they they blame it on Stretch, <laughs> and they're confused as to why why their house is falling down when he's screaming the tear it down, bring you to hell. Well, I'm gonna well, do some more coke. Like, yeah. well, here's the thing. Okay, so here's a couple things. First of all. Like, in the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre, they were fairly incognito. They just lived in a little house in, the, in, in you know, the middle of Texas. Here, they've got, like, catacombs, fucking mannequins, a giant stairwell up to a tower. Like, it is the least. Like, like they might as well just have a giant sign that just says, crazy people live here. <laughs> cops, cops come and inspect. Um, so they, they recreate the dinner scene from the first movie. And here's a few fun facts. Tom Savini considers the grandpa in this scene his best work, even though it literally just looks like Dan Aykroyd in Nothing But Trouble. Um, <laughs> Dennis Hopper considers this his worst movie. He is embarrassed that he's a part of this movie, but on the flip side, Bill Mosley considers this his best movie. <laughs> <laughs> These are all facts taken from IMDb. Uh, so Lefty shows up and has a chainsaw battle with Leatherface, and and you know that uh, he he kills Leatherface, and then okay, so he Leatherface. How does Leatherface live through getting a giant, like four foot long chainsaw through his his stomach? Uh, I feel like from this point on. Anything after this movie is not actual canon to the first two movies anymore. Um, okay, that makes sense. But one question. I've watched this movie twice, and I wonder if, if I missed something. Like, did I turn away? Do I have a copy that doesn't have the, 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 the full movie? Is it in the director's cut? I don't know. Does Drayton... Does that – does it explode? Like because yeah, it explodes off screen. Everyone except for Stretch and Chop Top are killed from an off screen grenade explosion that but just where, happened. Where is, where is that said? No one says that. No, it, the grenade drops and then you see uh, Stretch and Chop Top like running out of the catacombs up those stairs and in the background you just hear like – like, yeah, there's just like a muffled explosion oh, like, that kills off over fifty percent of the characters in this movie. But we don't need to see that, right? That's fine. So, so Stretch finds this shrine of their grandma, who is, I guess, still alive, and she pulls the chainsaw from Grandma's hands and uses it to kill Chop Top, and then goes into her leather face dance, uh, similar to the one at the end of the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I hated that. And then that's the my favorite over. part of this movie. Oh yeah, no, it's horrendous how bad that ending is. I still enjoy this movie. It is definitely never going to be better than the original. I don't think 
damn near anything will ever be better than the original movie. But I still think... Uh, I would actually go as far as to argue that Texas Chainsaw Massacre is right up there with, with Hellraiser for, like, franchise that had great start, okay sequel, and then just straight ass from, like... You take that back, CD Cenobite rules! <laughs> <laughs> we are discussing that. CD Cenobite. The most 90s <laughs> decision. The most 90s thing ever. <laughs> oh my god, it's so fucking CD, bad. The movie that had a CD Cenobite and a Cenobite that had a video camera shoved into his face. Oh, oh so good. No, <laughs> really. I started rewatching Hellraiser 3 Hell on Earth and... I'm being absolutely facetious when I say it's great. It is it's terrible. <laughs> yeah. It's it's the it's one of the less terrible of a franchise of garbage. Like it's it's got a couple cool moments, which is more than I can say about like parts 5 and beyond. <laughs> like Yeah. Like there the, the Hellraiser the Hellraiser franchise might genuinely be the most unwatchable horror franchise <laughs> and yet once uh, again i own all of them uh we're we're ignoring saw because those are unwatchable for me yeah no i'm not a fan of saw either but there's at least people i i don't know a ton of people who fucking rant and rave about how great hellraiser 7 is you know what i mean like <laughs> there are people who will swear up and down on every goddamn saw movie and i don't understand it um but that's that's whatever so <laughs> what did you guys watch this week Adam? Um, I did not watch much. I know that How Did This Get Made released uh, an episode on Hell Comes to Frogtown with uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper. <laughs> yep. So I listened to that. Oh, my God. Rest in peace, Rowdy Roddy. Fuck. It God, that so movie good. is so good, and that podcast episode is so good. <laughs> yeah. It Scott, really you've good. seen I Hell like Comes it. to Frogtown, right? No, I have not. Oh, let me tell oh, you man. real quick. Real, real quick summary. Uh, Roddy, <laughs> I, 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 Roddy Piper. What is the summary? Is Roddy, it, is, is Roddy Piper, Piper kicks the shit out of uh, uh, zombies, right? No, 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 no. no, no, no it's no. so much better than that. Yeah. Oh my god! Roddy Piper plays a man named Sam Hell, and uh, he is the most potent man on the planet. Uh, they're having trouble procreating. Uh, and he is a serial rapist, so the government's like, hey, you like raping people, you gotta go and rape all these women so that we can repopulate the earth and fight the frog monsters. And he goes to Frogtown. Why and- do you think I wanna watch this? <laughs> Because they don't no, because, because they don't really show any of the rapes. It's just said off screen like, hey, you know what? You raped this girl, but you got her pregnant, and she always wanted to have a kid, so she's dropping charges. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, what the like, fucking you, you world is this? You a string of pregnancies across the country <laughs> everywhere you went. So, Are you fucking dude, serious? It is fucking nuts, but it's Roddy Piper fighting frog monsters. <laughs> Like, yeah, and like uh, the the frog monsters, you know, in Forbidden Zone, how that one guy had the frog head. Like they yeah. look that bad. That's how <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a point where someone has to make it has to do the dance of the three snakes, which involves making all three frog penises hard at the same time. <laughs> 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 Guys, you're not, not selling me you. on this shit. <laughs> uh, all right, so yeah, no, check out that. How did this get made? And maybe check out Hell to Comes the Frog Town if you've got the oh. sick sense of humor that Adam and I have. Uh, Scott, what did you watch? I uh, I watched Legends of Tomorrow and Flash. I don't have. Uh, God damn it, guys! You've ruined my day. <laughs> uh, all right, is that all you got for this one? <laughs> yes. All right, I watched for Weird Ass Movie Night. I uh, did a screening of the movie The Lost Skeleton of Cadavera. Oh, yes. Which is a fucking masterpiece. Like, it's it's a garbage movie, but it's one of those rare times where it's intentionally being a garbage movie. It is trying to be an Ed Wood film. And unlike... It succeeds. Yeah, I was going to say, unlike every other attempt that people have ever made to make an Ed Wood movie, this one hits every single note perfectly. The, the acting is exactly how it needs to be. There's not a whole lot of, like, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, we're making fun of these movies. Like, it's just, we wrote shitty dialogue on purpose, but we're going to deliver it with the absolute most sincere way that we can deliver this dialogue. Um, it's just so... The, the camera shots, the awkward holding of, like, people standing there after their lines are done, like... Every, yes, yes. Every step is spot on. 
it's fucking great. And the best part, I forgot about this the last time I watched it. The best part is that the skeleton is the only character in the movie that is aware that he is in a garbage film. It's amazing. Like, everyone else talks like it's the 1950s, and then whenever the skeleton talks, it's so, like, you're an idiot. <laughs> like, just, like, really direct. <laughs> this is dumb. <laughs> like, uh, but yeah, that was that. That movie is just top fucking notch. Uh, so if you have not seen Lost Skeleton of Cadaver, go and like seek that movie out. One of my favorite line, one of my favorite moments in the movie is uh, is there's a scene where the skeleton is all the way off in like a cave elsewhere in the in this at this point in the movie, and a bunch of people are fighting, and the one character is like. Uh, says something along the lines of like, "Just you wait, just you wait until I cap get to the lost skeleton of Cadaver," and then it just cuts to the skeleton in the cave, and the voiceover just goes, "That's me," and then it cuts right back to the rest of the scene. Ah, <laughs> <Like, laughs> oh, it's fucking. I, I feel like talking about the lost skeleton of Cadaver is better than actually watching it. No, it is. That may have been the most fun any of us have had in a long time at Weird Ass Movie Night. Which is saying something, because we did watch the FP like a week prior. But uh, this was on the same level as watching the FP. That was Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 from 1987. And, uh... Yeah. We watched watched some accidental cannibalism, Scott's favorite subgenre of horror... And, you know, this This is what happens when you guys don't write to us. So send us emails at hmnpodcast at gmail.com. Tell us what movies we should be watching and even hop on the old iTunes. Give us a rate and review. Click that subscribe button and all the other good jazz because we love hearing from you. You know that we love doing mailbag episodes if we get some letters. You don't even have to just send us suggestions. You, If you just want to shoot us a letter about something that, that we said on the show that you'd like to uh, know more about, we're we're always happy to tell some stories. It's yeah, certainly better than discussing some of the garbage that you guys recommend. But yeah, send us an email at hmmpodcast at gmail dot com. listening to the Geekscape Network. 